We talked about RNA synthesis for the purpose of making proteins in the transcription translation video. Well, DNA synthesis or DNA replication is for the purpose of cell division. The cell's going to need two copies of its DNA if it's going to divide and have two identical copies of its original cell. And DNA replication occurs a little differently depending on if the cell's a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Because prokaryotes have circular DNA, we would only have one origin of replication and it would just copy around until the circle's complete. But in eukaryotes, it's not circular DNA, but a very, very long strand of DNA bunched up. So in eukaryotes, there are multiple origins of replication, which allows the replication to occur a little faster than if there were only one origin of replication. An origin of replication is an area of DNA that bubbles out in preparation for replication. So there's just one bubble here for prokaryotic circular DNA, but many bubbles form for eukaryotic DNA. There is a sequence of nucleotides at the origin of replication that signal to replicating enzymes that this is where to begin replication. Replication occurs in both directions of the bubble, so the bubble elongates and grows till we finally have two new complete helical DNA structures at the end. DNA is built in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, but what does that mean? Well, the structure of DNA is such that we have a sugar phosphate backbone on each of the two strands of DNA that are held together by nitrogenous base pairs, all the ATCGs. The carbons on the deoxyribose sugar molecule are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The fifth carbon happens to be outside of the sugar ring, and we've got an oxygen here. The 3' prime carbon of the sugar molecule is connected through a phosphate group to the 5' prime carbon of the next sugar molecule. At the 5' prime end, you find a phosphate group, and at the 3' prime end, you find a sugar molecule. Therefore, the direction of this DNA strand is going from 3' prime to 5', prime, and the other strand is the opposite. That's what anti-parallel means. DNA polymerase can only add a nucleotide to this 3' prime carbon. It cannot add a nucleotide to the 5' prime carbon, so it can only build a new strand of DNA in this one direction. This is important to remember because it's the reason for there being a leading strand and a lagging strand when DNA is replicated. In order for DNA to be replicated, it has to be opened up. The two strands have to separate, and the enzyme that separates the double helix is called a helicase. And then there are other enzymes that hold it open and prevent it from degrading, and these enzymes are called single-stranded binding proteins because there are surrounding enzymes that can degrade them. The next part is the part that I think confuses many people, the 3' prime to 5' prime stuff. This is how I like to think of it. DNA polymerase reads in the normal direction that we would like to count, 3, 4, 5, and if it's copying in this normal direction, 3' prime to 5', prime, then DNA synthesis will be smooth and continuous, a very simple and straightforward process. This means the other strand is not straightforward and not continuous because it has to copy DNA in the opposite direction. So what we end up with are these fragments called Okasaki fragments. Because DNA polymerase is going this way while the helicase is opening up DNA this way. DNA polymerase has to keep backtracking to copy the remaining DNA so we get these pieces called Okasaki fragments. The direction that the helicase goes determines which strand will be copied in one continuous piece and which strand will be copied in separate segments and then later joined together. The DNA polymerase that follows the same direction as the helicase will create the continuous strand of DNA. On this side, because DNA polymerase can only read in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, it can only copy the portion of DNA that's exposed, and as the helicase unzips more of the DNA, it has to go back and copy that portion, then the next, and then the next, and the next, all in separate pieces, not one continuous attached piece like the leading strand. The strand that's being built in the same direction that the helicase is going is called the leading strand, and this opposite strand with the Okazaki fragments is called the lagging strand, for obvious reasons. 
Another enzyme called DNA ligase will stitch the Okazaki fragments together so that the ligand strand will also end up as one long continuous piece of DNA. But there are more steps involved with the ligand strand. Because primases have to lay down more RNA primers at the start of each DNA segment, and those RNA primers have to be converted to DNA by another kind of DNA polymerase, and then all those Okazaki fragments have to be stitched together by another enzyme called DNA ligase. And there's only one RNA primer required for the leading strand and no stitching together of fragments because it is just one continuous piece. And these short red segments represent the RNA primers and they are required for DNA polymerase to attach to the template strand and begin adding on nucleotides. So one last time, DNA is read from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, DNA is built from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, and nucleotides are added onto the 3' prime end. Hopefully that's clear to you now. DNA replication is said to be semi-conservative because the resulting two new DNA molecules contain one strand from the original DNA template and one newly synthesized strand. And again, this is DNA synthesis, which is for the purpose of cell division, not for protein synthesis. Messenger RNAs are for protein synthesis.